Kansas City Chiefs training camp has been underway. Lots have been going on. One player who has not shown up is Orlando Brown. What is the state of the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line in this year's uh, training camp? You know, um, we talked a little bit about this a couple weeks ago, and at that point in time, we didn't think it was too big a deal. We thought, you know, it's an older older guy by standards of the NFL just taking his rest and will be ready to go. But as I looked more into it, it's starting to sound a lot more like there's some serious frustration. Um, yeah, like with having having Orlando Brown come over, you traded for him for draft picks but then you don't want to pay him top dollar because you don't feel like he may be one of the best players at his position. And now he's frustrated. And he's not coming to camp. Now, with that being said, I do think he will get it done because it's either that or you miss out on, a, I think a million dollars a week and he can only play 16 million on the franchise tag. So it doesn't make a lot of sense there for me, but let's say he decides to go that route. There are people that the chiefs feel good about Joe Thune has stepped in. He played some, uh, some left and right tackle, uh, they they have a guy. If it's me, if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm hoping that the rookie that we were excited about can come along. Uh, and that's Darian Kennard, who played left tackle, who played right tackle, who played a little guard at Kentucky. A guy we were really excited about uh, coming into the draft. Surprised he was picked in the fifth round. But this is a guy, if you ask me, I think he understands his role. And I think he's going to do everything he can to best understand what he needs to do going forward with this with this camp. So my biggest thing is just understanding what tackles do and what guards do and uh, just try to do my best to make sure I'm mentally prepared for when we get out there, we're going full speed, everybody. I want to be able to show what I have, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a learning process. You know, everybody's going to get got one time. You know, we're all out here, best of the best, but um, it's just about learning experience and uh, getting better every day. It's going to be, it's going to be about, it's going to be a learning process. For Darian Kennard, I was very high on him coming out of the draft. Aaron, you are the the draft expert. Do you think his role, he's going to be able to just jump right in and be able to kind of fit right in in this Chiefs offensive line? Um, I, I don't know if you talk about fitting right in. Offensive line is off, often about chemistry, right? Building five guys together, being on the same page. I think that's what you're trying to build in camp. Um, some things that he has going for him, I believe uh, Lucas Niang, who had some time in there last year, is starting the – the training camp on the PUP list, which allows Darian Kennard to get a little bit more reps. Uh, but to AJ's point, they do have some guys that they can throw in there. Uh, they can move around in Austin Reader. I know he's a, been a backup center. He's a backup center now, but he can play some multiple positions. You can move Joe Tooney outside, maybe put him at guard. Darian Kennard is just going to be. Oh, Darian Kennard is just going to be a guy, a guy who has to come to in when you're at Memphis. This is blocking guys. Hey, hey, buddy. What How you doing? Nothing. Just, you know, was trying to be professional and hop right in there when things are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't hear. So, what happened? Oh, yeah. You, you just cut out. And so, yeah, we just went ahead and jumped in. Um, if his earpiece went out. So, um, I, I mean, I'm assuming that he understands that Darren Kennard is going to have to play his role slowly and come along as the weeks go through. He's right about Niang being injured. He's right about Ryder being moved on. Luckily, they had a Creed Humphrey who's played pretty well for him. But my biggest thing is Orlando Brown was a big part of this entire remake over from that abysmal Super Bowl that they had. They wanted this line to be intact going forward after giving Pat Mahomes 10 years, $450 million. So if they can't get it figured out with Orlando Brown at some point in time, yeah, you may have something this year. You may be able to patchwork it but you still now have to go back to the drawing board and find a long-term plan if you can't get it done with Orlando Brown. I think this is the move they were saving the money for. I I think this is honestly why they didn't sign Tyree Kill. Uh, They're going to get it done. Um, It's just a matter of time. And to your point, nobody wants to go to camp, man. Listen, these players in the NFL, especially guys that have been in the league three years now, they do not want to be at training camp on July 27th having to get beat up and take hits and do all that stuff. The NFL has changed. These guys want to be fresh. They want to be ready to go come the season. They don't want to go in there and work in this heat. So a lot of them take advantage of the situation that they're in. He has a contract dispute. He didn't sign his franchise tender. I think he has a little bit of time to kind of work things out. Um, I'm not too concerned about Orlando Brown. I do think he's going to be there because when that money starts being 
you know, deducted from your account uh, because, or, you know, fines start rolling in. I, I, it changes people's mindset. So I'm not too worried, but I worry about the, the unit as a whole, just having that connectivity, being in sync to start the year, right? Low start maybe for Kansas City if he doesn't get in there right away. But overall, the course of a season, I think he'll be fine. Another unit on the Chiefs offensive side of the ball that saw quite a bit of change is the wide receiver position, obviously losing a big piece in Tyree Kill. Aaron, what does training camp look like <laughs> at the wide receiver position? I thought you were going to say losing a big piece in Justin Ross. Um, oh, hey, man. Why so, you guys, so, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He was going to be a boss. Justin now Ross that we're going to get into this here, now that you want, yeah. you wanted to do this, you brought yeah. this on yourself. We <laughs> just did. need to pour one out for Justin Ross. Okay. No. This man was going to be a beast wide receiver one. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you for <laughs> showing. Thank you for showing some goddamn respect to Justin Ross. You forgot to actually put the, the like thir three behind the one. He was going to be wide receiver 13. I believe they have 12 on their roster right now, <laughs> uh, which is sad. Uh, but anyways, let's let's talk about the Kansas City wide receivers. We've had this conversation all off season. Is it MVS? Is it Juju? Is it Nicole Hardman? Is it Sky Moore? Um, this might be the first time I actually say this. WRBC wide receiver by committee. It is going to be all of them. There are certain things that you're going to look for from each of these players to fill a role. It's going to be MVS to be making those off the top throws over the top for Patrick Mahomes. It's going to be a Mikael, Mikael Hardman filling in for a Tyree Hill running into rounds and bubble screens and getting him into space. Juju is going to be this possession guy. Josh Gordon, if he makes the roster, is going to be, you know, a guy that comes in every once in a while to make a play. And Sky Moore is this rookie that's kind of the unknown. The biggest thing here is I, I think the question is roster spots. Can Josh Gordon make this roster? A guy who's never played special teams before in his career. I think five total special teams plays in, in his career. A Sky who they love to have promise, but is he capable of getting a spot as a special teams guy that can help create big plays on the offense? We know that he's going to be on the roster, but is he going to contribute? Then you have just a bunch of names, Justin Watson, Dar uh, Darius Fountain. It's really about are they going to keep five or six wide receivers? I think with the, the injury to Justin Ross, it makes it a little bit easier for me. I think they hold on to all five. I think they keep MVS. I think they keep Juju, obviously, um, Miko Harmon, Sky Moore, and I do think they keep Josh Gordon. It is literally going to be a crapshoot every week on who's getting these targets outside of maybe a Juju Smith-Schuster. I think he's the one solid foundation piece that you can say he's going to see targets. Everybody else? It could be anybody. It literally could be anybody. And I think this is the first time we've seen this in this Chiefs offense since the days of maybe the end of Dwayne Bowe. When, like, when Dwayne Bowe left and there was nobody, nobody kind of left there. Um, I think this is the first time we've seen it like this in Kansas City for a while. I, I want to bring up a, a point on one name that you mentioned, uh, just an off-the-ball name, Darius Fountain. Like, that dude was legit at Northern Iowa. That's I like him a lot. Yeah, Darius, good track. Um, you know, <laughs> Darius, um, he, he came in. Black card back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> freaking Darius Fountain, though, real talk. Uh, broke in with the Colts a few years ago, battled a lot of injuries. Um, he, he came in and was a little bit banged up. He had a great preseason. He flashed in that area. Not saying the guy's going to be a freaking amazing wide receiver. All I'm saying is the guy has played a little bit and made a couple plays during this, these months. And like you said, special teams wise, that could kick a Josh Gordon off a roster. You're, that was tricky though. I got you now. The only reason Dylan knows his name is because he was a Colt and he's yeah. a Colts fan. Remember we talked about this. Fan. I know you are a Colts fan. If, if, if Darius if Fountain had been on the Chicago bears, you would not know. You would have not known how to pronounce his name. Nope. But I would have known. Whoa, him whoa, whoa. He, was a <laughs> he does. He does. He does do the big city sports podcast. So that, that might be, you picked the wrong <laughs> team. He, not Chicago. Do you still do that thing? I, I don't know. Shout out Big City Sports, you know. Uh, <laughs> I've been but, on a, but, a month layaway. <laughs> Chicago Sports, just hiatus right now. New York Sports, issue. hiatus. Uh, real quick to end this wide receiver talk and to end the Chiefs talk here, Eric, take me behind the scenes with, like, how training camps go at the wide receiver position. We talked last week about the AFC North and splitting up the work, like, like the reps for Jacoby Brissett and Deshaun Watson, how that looks. How does it look for a wide receiver group with a lot of fresh new faces and distributing reps and 
catches and things like that. How does that all work in training camp? It's about trust. Um, what I'd be interested in to look, if I was a Chiefs fan, I'm looking at who was working out with Patrick Mahomes in the offseason. Was it a B. Cole Harbin? Did MVS and Juju try to come in and say, hey, come out and throw some routes with me to get that timing right? To me, it's strictly about who does Mahomes trust? Who does Andy Reid trust to be where they're supposed to be? Wide receiver and quarterback connection is all about trust. It starts there. It, it, it ends with, hey, can you run a route? Hey, can you you know block this? Can you do that? If your quarterback trusts you to be where you're supposed to be, that's a good starting point. I look to early in preseason, early in the season, I look to see where Andy Reid is lining these guys up and who Patrick Mahomes trusts. If there's practices, we don't like to take a lot out of practice, but if you see practices where an MVS is catching three touchdowns that game or that practice, pay attention to that because it's going to show a development of trust between Mahomes and them versus a backup quarterback in that player. So I look for the trust factor to determine who's going to get the reps. I do think Juju will see the first reps no matter what, based on tenure, based on previous uh, ability and kind of production. And then Miko Hartman, because he knows the offense and has been there, but that third spot, Sky Moore, MVS, Josh Gordon, I think it's going to come down to trust factor. Don't sleep on hey. Miko, man. Led, led his career high in receptions and yards last year. Miko Hartman is going to be a problem because people, yeah. I know people want to forget him. He's been there and they do like him. It's not like they don't like him. They, they trusted him. They kept giving him the ball even when he messed up. Yep. yep. Even in the playoffs. And, and we do, we do know who AJ is pulling for WNBA star Sky Moore. Sky Moore. And I'll say the same thing. Sky Moore is going to be a problem. Like, just, just wait and watch, man. I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm not worried about that take at all. I <laughs> see none of us Sky Moore, <laughs> Sky, hey, you know, Sky Moore can't even dunk. Hey, AJ, AJ got the Bob Marley shirt on right now. He's rooting for Josh Gordon, okay? So he's got that low-key oh Josh Gordon God. rooting for him. Hey, I was going to bang the drum for Josh Gordon earlier, too. But, you know, it's cool. Hey, they're they going gangbusters on this offense. Everybody gets the ball. And you, you get a, ball, get a you pass. Get a you get Wide receiver <laughs> by committee. Every That's, game is going to be so Kelsey's going to get his. For <laughs> fantasy Absolutely. owners, it'll be frustrating. For football fans, they'll get a, a taste of a bunch of different receivers. 